Well, I've always been um, keen on nature and making things with my hands and done quite a lot of sewing and quilting in the past and moved on to fibre art, which is really using any kind of fibre and material to make an art form. Um, and these guys, I'm not quite sure why I started on turtles, but I think it was um, seeing um, information at the zoo around the concern about turtles. Um, so I decided to do the ones close to home, the eight turtles of Ontario, and uh, seven of the eight are at risk of extinction and that's a real concern. And they're such amazing creatures, but people don't see them very much because they tend to hide away and, and tuck themselves in wetlands and areas that are not so easy to get to. Um, but lots of concerns about them. So I decided to make them, and uh, they're made of, of paper mache and fabric. And inside, there's a little block of wood that the legs and tail and head fix onto so that you can move them because their posture is relevant to each turtle. Some hold their head up, some down. Um, the underneath of the shells are um, very interesting. And actually, looking underneath the, sh the um, shelves here, you can see the colors of the underneath. Um, and some of this is with paint. And on their bodies, some is paint, some is uh, embroidery. Uh, and there is as authentic as I can make them. Um, very kindly, the Toronto Zoo loaned me some turtle shells, Julia Phillips at the zoo, and that helped me to get the texture and shape and made me realize how individual each species is and how different they are. They um, have a, a program called the Turtle Tally program, and uh, it's part of their adopter pond program and with the turtle tally they're wanting to find out where turtles live, where they nest, where they um, uh, spend their time and obviously their staff can't tell where they are all over the area so they're asking um, just regular citizens, citizen scientists as we call ourselves now, to call in any observation of turtles. So if you see a turtle maybe trying to cross a road and lay its eggs or by your cottage or uh, on a pond where you're kayaking, um, collect the details of where it was, what time of day, what it was doing, how it was behaving and um, on the turtle tally leaflet which we have here for people to take away it gives you a website that you can um, put this input this information which they collect all that data and add it to their database um, if you have a photograph you can add that to it um, and on the little leaflet it gives you the pictures of all the different eight uh, turtles so it would help you to identify which the turtle was that you saw um, and it's a very worthwhile program and um, the zoo will send out an information package to anyone that um, requests it who have, has, have reported in a turtle sighting um, and they will get more information and feel very much part of this program which is really important. Um, sometimes, particularly at this time of the year, we see turtles trying to cross the road from a wetland to get to a nice little bit of gravelly area to lay their eggs. And, and sometimes um, these turtles get damaged and, and killed on the road by cars. So if you see a turtle that's trying to cross the road, stop your car and pick it up, if you can, safely. Pick it up and take it the way it's going. Don't turn it round because it will turn round. It has a destination that it's aiming to. Um, and uh, with most of them, you can handle them quite well. The, snap the snapping turtle, the big guy, uh, probably you'd need a piece of wood or something because it might snap at you because it's feeling a bit vulnerable. If you find an injured turtle, uh, there are two air places close-ish to here. One is the Toronto Wildlife Centre and the other is the Kawartha Turtle Trauma Centre. Both of them um, will look after and try to um, return to health an injured turtle. So um, information is on the website for either of those places.